This is the beautiful land of Israel and Palestine. The world's three largest religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, consider it Holy Land. Each year, millions of people from around the world come here to pray for peace and prosperity. Yet this land is also a major center of conflict in the world today. For Jewish Israelis, the conflict centers on protecting a homeland created for the Jewish people in 1948. For Palestinians, it is about resisting decades of colonialism, expulsion, occupation, and apartheid. Most people identify apartheid with the grotesque system of control that existed in South Africa from 1948 to 1994, in which the white minority ruled over the black majority, stole their land, and deprived them of basic rights. It was a system reviled by the whole world, and it eventually crumbled under the combined pressure of internal resistance and international sanctions. Today the word is back, and with it too is a growing global movement to end the Israeli version of apartheid. Life in the occupied territories has been increasingly described by many people as akin to apartheid. Apartheid is the only term that accurately defines the system that Israel is trying to develop. It isn't just a policy. It's not just discrimination. It's the way the system is structured. It's a separation of populations in which one group permanently and institutionally dominates another group. Apartheid was the attempt to separate people and allow resources and privilege and rights to flow to people on the basis of the separate groups in which they were categorized. The architecture um, was, was amazing. First you give people an identity. Then, of course, you give people past laws, so you define how they can move freely um, and you construct blockages for the movement of people. I have been able to visit Israel and Palestine. What I experienced there was such a crude reminder of our painful past in apartheid South Africa. I think for me the one element of apartheid that stands out is the influx control system where there were very tight, rigid policies 
uh, and people had to carry passes that enabled them to travel from one area to another. The pass was much more than an identity document. It was a mechanism to ensure the control over people's movement and where people lived. On the roads when you travel in the West Bank, on the checkpoint there is lanes. Lane for the uh, for the settlers where they bypass the checkpoint, and lanes for the Palestinians where can they stuck there for hours. In the worst times of apartheid in South Africa, we never had the separate roads that you find in the West Bank, for example. You know, which in in South Africa we didn't dream that we'd have roads that would be only for whites. It's worse than a prison. No access to the hospitals, no access to the education, no access for, uh, for social, social good to your people. South Africa, they were talking about 13% of South Africa to the South African people in cantons. Here, when you look at the map now with the wall, what they are created is about leaving to the Palestinians 12% of our historical land. In the South African context, the attempt by the apartheid government was to de-citizenize uh, more than 80% of, of the South African population and then give them new citizenship in some kind of a fantasy entity, uh, Babutotswana, Transka, etc. So, so the South African state could say, you have no claims over us, you, you're a citizen of, uh, of Babutotswana. The vision was to create a demographic white majority at least of citizens, even though you were going to have the others uh, uh, in your midst. They embarked upon this remarkable experiment of, of trying to cut up the country into banter stands. It was to create separate states. It was not, it was not so much a two-state solution as a multi-state solution. To me, the big analogy was that South Africa, in, in taking these two choices, where you've got two or more nationalisms laying claim to the same country, you either got to find a way to live together or you've got to have a fair partition. The big similarity between apartheid South Africa and the Israeli-Palestinian situation is that both decided to have a partition solution. And in both cases, it was a grotesquely unfair partition. The apartheid authorities had what they called black spots, incidents where black people were occupying land and what they therefore did was to send in the police, send in the military with heavy trucks that would break down the homes of people and that would remove families that have been staying on land for decades and remove them and just dump them. It was nice and so far until the Afrikaner people started harassing us. They said we are staying nearer to town. We are blacks, we, can't, we are not supposed to stay there. Because they said we can't stay near the white people, so that they must separate us, we mustn't be together. So they take the place, they give it to the whites. They give us only one day notice, tomorrow we are moving. The truck will wait outside and then the soldiers will go into the house, remove the furniture into the truck. They just bulldoze it to the ground. They take the family out, the bulldozer comes. Then take you children, put you behind the truck, the mother and father.
And the house demolition issue is one of the most painful parts of the occupation. If you deny Palestinians a home, and connected to that is a concept of homeland, on two levels you're denying them a home, on the individual level and the collective level, the message is get out. And that's really the message of, of the house demolition policy. Wednesday, July 22nd, 1962. The Boers are breaking down our house. Two bulldozers. And of course the house crumbled. I felt the pain. It was my blood, my bones, our flesh that was being broken down. No book can describe, no poem can describe the horror because our houses were not houses, they were human beings. I saw bone and blood and veins and brains. Their houses are being demolished because Israel wants their land. And it wants to either force them out of the country or confine them to little islands in what we call a Bantustan. 